it, this is a call meeting order. This is the um, Monday, April 30th, 2018 meeting of the Northampton Historical Commission. Uh, and we'll, the meeting is called to order. And the first item on our agenda is a notice to all that the uh, meeting um, may be video or audio recorded. It is. It is? Yeah. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, general public comment. And this will generally be for any item that's not already identified as a subject of interest in the agenda, um, but for any other general comment. I assume everyone is here for a specific project. Um, the next item, uh, 2A, I will make to the um, to the commission and that is that one of our members, um, uh, Craig, is uh, recusing himself for item uh, four uh, on this agenda. Is that correct? It is these gentlemen here for the demo delay talk about that house on South Street. Yes, that's item four. So you're recusing yourself for that one item? Yes. Okay, just a procedural question. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Number three on our agenda is approval of minutes. Okay, to come. Okay, so number four uh, is to get right to it, and that's a continuation of a discussion uh, or hearing uh, determine whether 236 uh, South Street uh, should be considered preferably preserved uh, pursuant to Chapter 161 of the City Code and whether a demolition delay period should be imposed. Um, at our last meeting, we appreciated the, the, the um, uh, comments and, and the contributions from petitioner. Also, um, uh, Bruce, I think you were going to look into, were you going to look into the, the, the subject in the interim until this meeting? Okay. No, I wasn't going oh. to look into it. All right. Pardon me. Um, also, if you're talking about design, there was a design that came around. This it was advice, and, yes. and I did comment to Sarah. As did I. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any comments you want to make to? I mean, there was another one that came through. Well, I think we were asked to do that. Right. Yeah. Well, we was yeah. The, yeah. Or was yeah. I volunteered yeah. to do that after the right. last meeting? But yes, I, I did yeah. look at that and I submitted my comments. Likewise, to Sarah. and I think they were the same comments. <laughs> we think alike. <laughs> Okay, um, so why don't we um, begin, and if, you know, whatever else you want to contribute. I'll just write some, <coughs> okay. some sketches. Okay. So there's some, um, we have limited site plans, so you guys okay, can share the site plans. So I apologize, having missed the last meeting, Catch me up. This is the Lake of Sisters live at 236 South Street. They found them. Um, that was where the Lake of Clara was. Okay. Clara founded it. Great. Uh, as noted in. And it was originally. After it was the first Lake of But let's, let's talk about that separately. Okay. Um, Okay, thank you. Significant changes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you again for having us. Um, uh, we have not had the, the uh, opportunity to meet. My name is Ben Lewis. This is John Landry. Um, this is Commission Gaffney. Member Dylan Gaffney. Thanks, and, and thank you. Um, so uh, at our last meeting, we, we received substantive comments, which we really appreciated and uh, we really took to heart to help us shape the future of what we are looking to do at the corner of South and Olive. Uh, in addition, uh, so after the job, um, made the changes that were suggested here, um, we submitted those to Sarah. I believe that everyone has had the opportunity to see those. And even if after we got those feed that feedback back, we have uh, tailored this uh, to address the, the few remaining uh, negative, you know, uh, negative pieces of feedback. Um, just the, the key highlights here, uh, just to bring everybody up, um, really trying to make sure that it fits in with the neighborhood. The color scheming was changed. The roof pitches, pitch, the pitch of the roofs were changed. Um, and we have uh, three different layouts uh, demonstrating uh, its situation in the neighborhood. So um, happy to answer any questions. I don't want to, I didn't feel like we need to make a whole additional presentation again, but um, thank you. Okay. 
Um, thank you. Our, our primary um, concern with design, as you recall, was not to ride herd over an area of which we technically have no purview, uh, which was, you know, being a design board, which we're not, but to try to find some similarity of rhythm and volume and, and, and space that would be consonant with the rest of the neighborhood. Um, so thank you very much for, for doing this. Just to contribute to the discussion uh, and not to, I'm not responding in any way, I did take a look into the history of the, of the, the existing building. I don't know if you, do you know it more than? Uh, what's on what's on that sheet? On the form B? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me, um, can you pass it up? Yeah. Um, the, um, if you look first at, at um, the uh, all tech page on the Lakeshore community, um, and remember, I'm not I'm not reading this in order to throw uh, uh, a problem at this at this application, but simply to we know what we're talking about. Um, the um, uh, let's see. If you start the paragraph that says the board successfully petitioned the state legislature mm -hmm. for a charter, um, a second 10 room house on the corner south and olive was purchased and named the home for aged and in invalid women of Northampton. Um, uh, and so this was um, after the Dickinson, um, uh, after her first home um, at near the current Cooley Dickinson Hospital. Essentially, this was the foundation of the Lathrop Homes. The, this was, it was the foundation for the building across the street, and then it was, which in turn became the foundation for the, the two communities, one in East Hampton, or yeah, East Hampton and the other in, in Northampton. Mm -hmm. um, and it was um, named uh, for the significant contribution of uh, Clara Lathrop, uh, who is um, described in this section from Historic Northampton, um, as being a, an artist and, and community uh, person, uh, contributor of great um, uh, assistance to the city. Um, the, uh, as you can see at page three, uh, she was, she, uh, um, I think in fact that the, this printout may not have carried all of the information that was originally there, but um, she, was, she was actually a, um, a Assistant to um, Dwight <coughs> Tryon, who was the the founder of the uh, of the first art um, museum at uh, Smith College, um, and uh, was a was a contributor. Great note. So like like others before, like uh, George Washington Cable, who was a who was an author, came to Northampton, ended up founding the People's Institute and uh, uh, and and home culture clubs. She was an artist, came here from, uh, uh, from the South, uh, from, from Georgia, and uh, ended up help, helping to found, uh, or was the founder for this, uh, this uh, women's home, one of the first assisted living facilities for, for uh, women who didn't have means for independent support. So it was really quite a, a, um, a notable contribution and, and, and a notable house, because it was notable also for what it wasn't, and that was it wasn't an, an institution. Uh, rather than creating an institution for, for women, as was the tendency uh, in, in that era um, to create institutes, uh, they, their vision was that it would be home-like and, and kind and, and uh, pleasant for them. And, and so they, they acquired and, and, and um, renovated that, that building that you now own. So it, was, it, it actually uh, does play a... a, a a compassion and good role in the city's uh, historical architecture, not perhaps for for its uh, elegance or for um, uh, stand out qualities of, of any sort, but for its role in, in as an early uh, and independent uh, piece of uh, architecture used for social uh, for the social good, and we um, we should value it for that. Having said that, um, we still. That I, I said in the beginning, that was not meant to put, a, you know, to stymie any change on this. But I, I did want there to be a clear history that it was, uh, although a um, not a looker, as it, had, it, it is um, uh, nonetheless historically significant to the to the uh, to the values that we now hold dear 
in Northampton, uh, taking care of people who can't take care of themselves. Um, do anyone, I, I would value, after my soliloquy, a uh, contribution from others in the, in the committee? Well, I have a vague recollection of what the, your first plan looked like, and I can see that, you know, this, we did take into consideration some of the concerns that we had about it looking like a fortress mm -hmm. on the street. Um, and, um, you know, your redesign of it um, with the gables and the, re, you know, the recessed um, parts, I think, um, you know, are, are a good improvement, you know, to what, um, you. to what you had before. So, um, I'm happy to see that, that part of it, yeah. Bruce, anything? Well, I was just going to say, this is always one of the conundrums of historic preservation, mm -hmm. is that there's a great deal of history uh, to just about any structure, any property, but it's invisible history. Mm -hmm. You know, this history is not the same as yeah. the building that's there. Mm -hmm. And consequently, um, you know, unless the building you know, represents say an architect or some design facets that would relate directly to this say if the later the mural was painted on the back of it or something like that that might take on you know additional meaning so but right now i think we just need to look at the context of the neighborhood and see what this um new thing would be uh in in that context and i think that uh, you know, with the um, uh, changes to the, the roof line, uh, bringing some of these facades back and forth, that sort of breaks it up and it does make it look like, um, you know, a, a big building stuck out there. It does pick up, even in one building, it picks up some of the character uh, of the neighborhood. So I think that uh, you're aimed in the right direction on this. And not being a historic district, you know, that's about all I can mm -hmm. say on that. Thank you. I just thank you for your input and thank you for following up from the two meetings. I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I agree with Bruce. I mean, I think that it's really come a long way. Um, you know, this um, this is an eclectic neighborhood. Um, it has a lot of different styles of architecture and ages and um, historically a lot of different functions. Um, I, you know, it, it is a big building for this property compared to what's there now, but it's what the zoning allows, so I don't think we have a lot we can say about that. Can you hear me okay? There. No, no. Okay. Um, you know, I appreciate you altering the roof lines, um, you know, pitching them more. I, I like the chunkiness of the columns. I think that was one of my comments. Yeah. Um, it helped, it helped kind of feel like it was holding the building yep. up a little better. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I just I, I think in terms of height and then the, the fracturing of the uh, facades is going to really help it um, so I I guess I'm inclined to feel that um, I, I'm more comfortable supporting this and uh, I still would love to have some kind of a just a commemorative something on mm -hmm. the site which the was the, the original mm -hmm. yeah uh, whatever it might be, just work that into the landscape somehow. Maybe it's in the courtyard, I don't know. We have sort of a, a spot where the building turns where it just sort of feels like it feels appropriate. Yeah. So just a small plaque, and I'm not sure the language of you, but it's basically language that I adopted from the language of the I don't know exactly which historical commission. Uh, the paper is over This farm me. Yeah, the form B, whichever, whatever the language was. So I, I utilized their, um, yeah, thank you. So thank you for your feedback. Uh, Barbara, do you have Well, I agree with a lot of what's been said already, and I really like the idea that it, it really looks so much better broken up I and mean, like with different, um, with the facade not all being one massive. Piece. What is the door treatment it, under the? Yeah, it's hard to see what that is. So yeah, the, uh, the under the what look to be the, the, the doors. are there the are there doors? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Okay. And will um, will they be of the traditional sort of front door yeah, appearance? Yeah, we, we had wood doors with um, some lights up high, transom lights on the top. 
Yeah, I think it just fits in a lot better. To, I mean, it's still a big building, and um, but I think because it's broken up, it it softens that impact. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The little. Oh, I'm sorry, Barbara. Don't go ahead. That's what really all I have to say. The little strip of land that's to the west of it, um, it looks like a sliver on here. Unless. It looks like there's 55 feet of frontage. You see that? Show, can you just point to where you're showing Yeah, right here. Okay. This little finger. Uh huh. Do you own that? This is the neighboring property. That would be this house. That's it's correct. just a lawn. I mean, yes. it's a, the little white house. The white house. house. Uh -huh. The fine lawn. With the big, what, elm tree in front of it? Well, the reason I'm asking about that is I think one thing that will be really important is if that remains green space, because I think it will help soften the size of the building. Um, and I don't know, I'm sure you don't have any control over that, but it, I mean, it's it's too small of a lot right. to be it's built on. No, that, that's the neighbor's. If you look in the middle. Oh, to the left of their driveway. Yeah, yeah. to the left yeah. of their driveway. Here. Oh, that area this is terrific. grass. Is that what, is that what you're yeah, asking yeah, about? Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. yes. Do you own that? <coughs> the piece within our area is owned by us, and that is not. Yeah, this is an that, that's someone else's so, yeah. lot. Okay. I believe. Lawson Reed Wilson. Wilson or something no. like that? Okay, so. Well, I think from your comments, obviously uh, has some history, which like a lot of buildings that we see have unfortunately been lost by so many changes and so many of the original features. I, mean, going, I can't comment on the changes in the plans because I didn't see the previous one, um, but I appreciate the effort being made um, to try and make it fit into the neighborhood. It is a very varied neighborhood, um, mm -hmm. a lot of different sizes of buildings. So. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a proposal, and that is that um, we proceed with allowing construction with two uh, conditions. One is that there be a plaque memorializing the, that it stands on the site of the first uh, Lathrop home with with uh, credit given to uh, the original founders, uh, uh, Ms. Lathrop, who worked hard to, uh, to uh, sponsor this, uh, and also that you conduct a uh, Photo survey of the existing building, uh, both from all from all four points of the compass from the outside, and also key interior shots, and file them with uh, the the uh, for the library um, uh, digitally for uh, their preservation. Is that yeah. Okay. Is there? I love that. Idea. Is there a specific contact person? That yes, there actually is. <laughs> You mind giving me that, but okay. however you want to be contacted? Sure. You want me to write down my email? Sure. Um, so this, to be technical, uh, this uh, pr this uh, motion um, would be to not uh, identify the property preferably preserved, it, correct? Well, it would be to find it preferably preserved, but allow an alternate plan. Okay. Um, to be this design and those conditions that you mentioned. Okay, so noted. Thank you if you can, can uh, convert that to a motion. And, and then with the two conditions that I put on. And, and the, the, the commemorative plaque would be on the exterior yeah. uh, and in some sort of protected spot. Um, and uh, I would hope, given the, uh, the, the scale of this project, that you could uh, see it your way to make it a, be a small bronze black um, they're not terribly expensive and it would be very fitting for a an early um, uh, um, altruist for, and, and a, a person who really gave a lot to the city and gave a lot to the to the women who were benefited by this this early project um, so uh, that would be lovely to see uh, but otherwise I, I would be happy to move forward with it that's my motion uh, now there's a second okay any discussion Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Approved. Just uh, one follow-up thing um, for, for the plaque idea. Um, mm -hmm. Calvin Coolidge's apartment, which was on Massasoit Street, he lived in a duplex uh, 
don't know the number, but it's towards the Elm Street end. Mm -hmm. um, it has a plaque on it. Oh, you're saying, oh. Yeah, so you um, might you drive by there, like you're going to the Y or something like that. So is, is the plaque on the building? It's on the building. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I think my kid is just over there. Yeah, so yeah. when you're, walk, you're walking by there, you get to see. This, this is say, history. Uh, sure. And um, there's you more text, I think, on, on the yeah, website. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. But there's information about um, what happens next. Clara, uh, so I send some of them to you, Angel Louie. Okay. Uh, so then you can be on the pedestal next to the sidewalk. Next to the sidewalk. Um, you, which is, is, will have to. So we get to the city. There's some historical. Uh, yeah, um, and you'll have to if it, if it's materially changed from this design. Uh, no, it won't. Okay. okay. Check with check with Sarah so, yeah. about that. There's so, so this is good until now. I'm talking um, to Louie about it and saying that we have the blessing. Uh, I don't know who produces this. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for having us back a couple times. Really, thank you for your extra help. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the gentleman that has a question about the vertical pedestals that the city has. Like a pedestal that they use for certain events. May I talk to you? Bronze ones, no. Bronze ones, the only ones I see have gone right on the structures. Yeah, we use. And we don't have a, a standard spec. I mean, the city use one, uses one uses different companies because we like it, and they're fairly easy to deal with. But we don't have any Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Um, the next item on our agenda, we're about five minutes early, but I hope that's okay, um, is a request for local historic district certificate of appropriateness. <coughs> um, um, pursuant to section 195 of Hampton Code for building renovation, work to include roof replacement and shutter removal. Trustees of Smith College at 109 Elm Street, partial 31B 198. Come on forward. And note to, and we're noting that Craig has rejoined us as a voting member. Barbara, you, you retired. I don't work there anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she says, does it count if you're an adjunct? Because I will be an adjunct in the fall. Yeah. You know, be employed by them again, but not just be a contractor. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. We'll see. Hi. I'm Laura Fitch from Fitch Architecture and Community Design. And Allison Hathalon Duke is a project manager with facilities at Smith. Um, so the, the Sessions House, I have some photos um, of it. Um, this one is, I think this one is from 1905, but I'm not really sure. And then this is before then because it doesn't have all these wings on the back of it, but I don't know when it is. Um, it did have shutters, and this, what, what I'm coming to, what we're asking for is actually to um, remove the shutters altogether. They're in very bad shape, and so it would be very expensive to replace them, but also do we want to replace them? Uh, the school doesn't, and there's evidence that maybe, you know, Certainly back then when it was built in 1700, that's what the plaque says anyway, <laughs> the bronze plaque on it, um, that there wouldn't have been shutters. There were at the time of this photo, but it's funny because they're shut, so it looks like they're not there on some of these, which to me looks a little less crowded than the pictures later when the shutters are there. Um, and I just have some just ar architectural drawings of without the shutters. And, with, and what I've noticed is that you tend to see the detail of above the window and yeah. without the shutters. So that's generally what we prefer and what we're asking for. And I did get pricing. Um, initially, I got pricing just from the shutter people of about $4,000 plus $1,200 for the um, hardware. But when we actually bid it, we did this as a bid alternate because we didn't really know which way you would fall on this decision. Um, the, uh, the low bid was at um, $7,100 to do the shutters. Mm -hmm. And the I bid was $12,000. So, <laughs> um, they're, they are quite expensive. So the the um, the, could, the building was built without shutters. I would imagine because it was built in 1700. So it's approximately 90 years before shutters came into fashion. From what you're, according to your um, um, what do you call yeah. it, um, guidelines, it says that. Um, and you're also working on the roof. Is that, is that right? Yeah. So the the roof will be. Um, 
done again in um, wood shakes on the front. Okay. Right now, this wood shakes right up to the front um, peak, and then it switches to asphalt behind it. Mm -hmm. And so we're just doing the same thing. By shakes, do you mean split or saw on that? Um, good question. Um, Better be saw on that. Uh, yeah, they're sawn, but with the taper, taper sawn. Yeah, no, that's fine, but it's not a texture, a split wood, which is over-textured for this period. Oh, okay. Yeah, it should be sawn. Oh, okay. When, so split would have been prior to that, is what you're Probably. saying? Probably. Okay. Uh, and then it, it's a much more rustic look. Yeah. This is a more sophisticated yeah. house, but a, a um, shingle is sawn, a shake is split. Yeah. Do, do we know the history of this house other than its construction date? Um, I ask because it's an unusual well, thing. The 1700s house that's well, two and a half story gambrel was, was it most... It was a tavern. What? It was Hunt's, yeah, it was Hunt's, Hunt's tavern. Jonathan oh, Hunt Jonathan built, built it. Yeah. I think it was 1700. Yeah. He built it okay. as a tavern, but it was certainly It's a style that's more common in the eastern part of the state where, where houses were close together and they needed to build up and get space, including uh, right under the roof line and the gambrel is the most most efficient way to create that. So um, it's a, a very unusual in farming communities uh, where it was trickier to build and, and you could build out. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, uh, knowing that it was built as a as a uh, yeah, tavern, it's not an yeah. so You can use the ground floor for commerce. It takes less timber. And apparently there's underground yeah. railroad. Um, there's supposed to be some secret passages or hiding places. Yeah, and somebody I actually lived in a little flat. I want to be shown those because I went to Smith. Nobody ever invited me right. to see <laughs> them. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, somebody lifted up a little flap and said, when you lift that, you can see a candle that was lit below or something. Yeah, yeah. Are there other questions for the Petitioner. Uh, I just have one, one comment and one question. I, I'm so glad you're doing this because I just, um, I think it's going to improve the look of this building if mm. you can just bring it back to its period. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. Um, plus the colors, the green colors. It looks like, you know, suburban, <laughs> like Westchester <laughs> County or something. <laughs> um, I wonder about the door on the structure. This is more just a discussion point. Is this the panel panel door? Is that something that would be that doesn't that seems very? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to replace this. I'm just curious if you had if you ever had to. What are those old photos show? The older ones. Hard to make out. Okay. We have more photos of this building. <laughs> oh, okay. At, at the library, and historic Van Hampton does as well. So we. That's just a comment. But otherwise, I think it's a really good no. project. And I did want to say that um, the three dormer windows were already replaced, mm -hmm. as were two upstairs. So we're actually restoring the ones that are original. Well, and they may not even have been original. They may have already been replaced once. But what's there now, we're restoring in this contract. Yeah. I, I feel I feel very positive about this That's application. Um, I think well, and the other good thing about it is if architectural historians look at this and say, oh, no, no, it really had shutters to start with. You can put them on always. <laughs> it's not like you're destroying an architectural <laughs> okay. What about the hinges? Do we keep? Oh, well, you always use the appropriate hinges and shutter dogs and all that. But to keep them on? Well, I don't know if it has them. You probably would just take the um, uh, shutters off and just leave the shutter hardware in place I think it's meant to match the uh, woodwork in the um, exterior that property. was never discussed with the owner so I don't know what they would prefer and um, I, is there a preference I, I, yeah, I didn't know what to think on that because the, the part of the history on the other hand uh, they, they're gonna look odd without the, the, the shutters there so uh, Depends if they're just they certainly need to be preserved, but I don't know if they need to be I preserved. I assume that they're the functional, therefore they are hinged. They are hinged, yes. yes. That, that's problematic, there would be hard work. Barbara, what did the, at the, at the uh, Parsons house, mm -hmm. what does the shutter job costing over there? Oh, it was at the Damon house. The yeah, Damon, Damon house, house. Okay. And I thought those shutters were on the Parsons house. No, no, the ones that were just restored for on the day, definitely the Damon House. And I really don't want to quote a price. I, I remember thinking that we had raised $10,000, which was going towards the shutters, but we did get some in-kind work. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not really sure how much, but they were, okay. you know, custom, all custom-made. Right. They were all brand new. Yeah. Yeah, they're brand new, but they match. 
I, I think we found some older shutters mm -hmm. somewhere right in storage and we're able to determine what they look like, but I'm not sure what the place was. Okay. I don't, when what? did the shutters become come more into use? Just 1790. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, they, they would have blinds that were solid that were used uh, all the way yeah, back in the 70s. What was the purpose? Was it to, was it to protect from Native Americans? Well, that well that that and and really that, like to like provide darkness, and in the winter, it's, 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 it's more of insulation. Um, yeah, I, and I think these are technically blinds, like Venetian blinds. They filter the light as opposed to a shutter. The reason why I ask is because there's some dispute on when this house was built, yeah. uh, going from 1700 to 1751. Mm -hmm. So 50 years is a lot of change. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, still clearly outside that day range. So let's go through this in stages. Anybody have any problem with the removal of shutters? No. Okay. Um, be mindful that they're valuable as architectural salvage. You can get some money for those. Okay. Anybody have any problem with the re roofing? No. From an from a appearance. Resolution and lawn Okay. Well, we're down to the important issue of the shutter dogs. Uh, <laughs> What do people feel about requiring? They are an historical feature of the house. They're much older than some houses in, in Northampton. But on the other hand, they've become their an appendage for something that is no longer there. Um, so uh, we're not talking about, I hope Smith would not be throwing them out. But um, uh, and, yeah, the question is, should they be removed um, and, and uh, the holes repaired? Yeah, I think I since think you're getting rid of the yeah. shutters, yeah. you might yeah, as well shutters. Yes. 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 But I'd sure. like to see him keep a couple as an example in case. All right. Um, and is there any other incidental repair work or change going to be going on for the sake of uh, just repair? Mm -hmm. Nothing okay. that would be of historical significance. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. No regrading on the front. On the back, there's a little bit of um, the the grade is quite high against the um, siding. And so we are um, taking it down a little bit, but that's on the back corner of the bar. Is that visible from the public way? Well, not really. Way back here. Okay. Any any other comments or questions? No. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the petition? So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? Thank you. All those. All those uh, the, the motion is to um, request a certificate of appropriateness. Uh, for the changes described at, at uh, 190, 109L, uh, and I'll call the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Unanimous. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll just point out that this would have been completely exempt uh, until the recent changes. In the okay. So this would have been completely exempt from review until the recent changes in the district. So shutter removal now has to come before the vote. I think it'll look better. Are you, are you going to keep it, the building white? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Colored to match. It was one of the first houses painted white on Elm Street in 1786. It was. Um, so also a named name. Elm Street. Yeah. Oh. There's several houses of very similar style to this in Heaven, and they're common in Heaven. Right. And it's the Portable Huntington houses. Um, so Do you know how it used to be? We said it was one of the first two. Probably just was like it was probably okay. This is a student paper from Smith yeah, from 1997. Do you have this? No. Can you get it on there? Yeah. Maybe Garden. Wrote it in 1997. How much house in Memorial Life? Because it's probably the house. Is it put in all the houses? Maybe Garden. Yeah. Pardon the delay, this is an important historical transfer of mine. It's a long article. Sir, can I just ask you a question? Sure. In terms of 
when you warn your computers one so yeah if you know the Softer colors to yeah, very uh, generally with a white trim or something like that. And have one that acts in on the so there are no paints were available. White was an expensive city man's paint. Lead based usually lasts a long time. Um, and some of the other paints were you know, softer colors that had a natural um, coloring. Oxygen. But again, they would be repainted and repainted and repainted. But you know, shutters like this are probably a colonial revival thing in the 1910s, 1920s. Everybody had to have shutters because that's, that's what I mean. Thomas Jefferson. Okay. Um, is it okay with everyone? We'll move forward to um, uh, agenda item six: request for local historic district certificate of appropriateness pursuant to section 195 of the Manhattan Code. Work to include replacement of. 21 windows um, and uh, at 219 Elm Street. Uh, would you like to, who would like to speak or would you like to both like to come up and let you both come up and uh, <laughs> Where speak to us about this petition? Where are we? Right there, it's fine. Yes, we'd like to replace the window. We've lived there since 1982. I've passed them up. <laughs> and now we have enough money to. I'm hard of hearing. Could you speak a little louder? We have enough. We, we want to replace our windows. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and you're, you're a wealthy man. <laughs> I saw the we price tag. After this. I saw the price tag on this. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so, would you like to talk about what you, what you, how, what kind of windows you'd like to yes. put so in? Yes. We, we, we found a window that we think is appropriate for. Um, for our house, and they're Marvin windows. They're called Marvin and Peggy windows. There are pictures that I forwarded. I hope everyone's seen them. Um, the key, um, I mean, these are over a thousand dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. They're nice windows. They're wood on the outside and no, inside. on the inside. And um, on the outside, I think they call them fiberglass composite or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They look like our windows. Um, from the street, they look much more like our windows than the other Marvin uh, window that has been installed across the street. Uh, apparently, it must have been passed by this group. Um, and the reason is they look more like our windows is because the bottom rail, the bottom horizontal rail, is three inches on most modern windows. My window it was still small, it was still an inch, I was like an inch and five eighths. And this in integrity window is an inch and a half. So it has a look that's mm -hmm. visibly different from the street. Um, that and the fact that they're high quality expensive windows is in my mind. Mm -hmm. and, and they're much more, they keep the weather out. These windows that were built 157 years ago are bad and they have <laughs> ugly storms on the outside. That will be gone. So this is an improvement to the house and with high quality windows mm -hmm. that match almost exactly the original design. Mm -hmm. and that's why. Are these uh, are the are the grills removable? No. Okay. No, no. These are divided lights. Divided lights. They're divided lights. Right? Mm -hmm. They have a spacer bar. They they might call them divided lights, but they no. they're, they're individual panes of glass separated by individual moments. I, I sent you guys uh, yeah, yeah, I can a picture of it. It's already technical. We do have it. I just wasn't sure for the picture. Yes. But, but the, there was space in between. Okay. So the, the, the space in between is filled with the Wait, it's in filler bar. Yeah, this is what you have today. Yeah. And yeah. so your windows are going to look like that. Yeah. When yeah. you're done. Yeah. Other two okay. Except the storms will be gone. Right. That we can't open. Yeah. So these look to be a six over six light window, mm -hmm. and the muttons would be 
three-dimensional on the exterior. Yes. They're not in between panes of glass. No, 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 no. no so it creates a shadow. That's not That's it. That's all I need. Yeah. I should mention uh, that in many communities now in Massachusetts, you have to have low E glass, except in Northampton. You don't have to have that because the the uh, there's there's such a good a good amount of energy preservation going on here that Northampton beats the threshold and you don't have to have the dark tinted glass. That is not good. Okay. Also the right. fiberglass is paintable, whereas if it was vinyl it would not be paintable. So if you do want to match a particular color or change a color or something, uh, the fiberglass is the preferred mm -hmm. material. Well, it's going to be browns right. that will match the, um, yeah. that's there now. But right. you know, once we, we'll have to take the, the um, store window frames mm -hmm. off and scrape them. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing that. So on the, on the inside, on the house uh, side, is it a, a single pane of glass? No. no. It's all, it, it, the muttons are fixed on both sides? Yeah. And it's wood inside. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So we'll be, so this having, fun, we'll be having fun painting. Oh, yes. Well, you know, there's a new product out. I saw on, on this old house, but they, it's, a, like a, it's like a rubber that you paint onto the, onto the glass. It's like a thin, rubbery paint that you paint onto the glass, and then you paint the mullions, and then you take a razor blade, and you around the glass and you just peel the rubber off the glass itself. Oh, really? It's yes. called a, what's it called? Yeah, but you have to, uh, you have to apply that to each. Hmm? You have to each apply that to each window. Yeah, but you have to paint it, you have to paint it with masking brush. tape. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm going to be using it for oh, example. Oh, I have to, see what you it's an emulsionally discolored, rubberized emulsion. Except if you ever work with the really, and you can paint your over it when it's on the wood. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I can't. So I'm just more for curiosity than anything else because I'm not trying to say, oh, you should have done this as opposed to that. But did you price out like, somebody restoring all your windows? What that would be versus a new no. window, or you just didn't consider it? You just, really wanted to get rid of the storm windows. No, I, I'm yeah, doing the work. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. The other thing is the curious. windows that we have, they don't they don't have a um, weight system like most. Yeah. Right. No, no. There's what no weight have? system. I know what that No, you, you, you have to use these. Okay. <laughs> and they're big windows. And well, they, do they have uh, holes in the side for they, pegs? Some of them do, some of them don't. I'm just they from the utilized, and yeah. there's at least three different kinds windows. of ways to, um, <laughs> there were some <laughs> things <laughs> where you <laughs> press in and you could yes. pull the window yes. off and you yes. could open it yeah. Yeah. either yeah. here or here. And that's yeah. What's the age of the house? 1861. 1861. August. What's the date of, of um, the sash weeks? Depends. <laughs> um, probably that would be a, after 1860 or so. That's when you got more manufactured building materials coming. Mm -hmm. That you could actually buy some of that, and that's when they would have windows fabricated off site, also pretty much like you do today. Uh, when there were actual mills that would produce all these things, mm -hmm. yeah. post Civil War, yeah. Uh, certainly, in larger cities, there would be factories that were window factories and door factories, uh, mill workshops, I think mm -hmm. they call them. Um, and and they'll be painted on that side to match existing. Oh, what side? On the outside of the no. They're the, already. Uh, oh, they're brown. They're they're, they're already yeah. colored. Yeah, we're, we're not getting. So the color that we see here is the which is the outside. Yeah, they call it bronze. It happens to match the cornice of the house that we yeah. have now, which okay. which by the way is an original color I, I discovered mm -hmm. on the back of the house. We had it white and cream for the long for like decades, and we discovered. Um, I don't know if this is relevant, but in, in the back of the house there was a, a covered part of the cornice and it was brown. It, it was like a very different look, which it has today. And, it's, um, mm -hmm. and so that's, uh, that happens to be the color of this bronze um, exterior. But you well, know, so it's paintable, but we're not going to paint yeah. it for a while. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments, Bruce? No. 
I, it looks like a premium product. You've done a lot of homework. You, you have been successful in finding a divided light uh, window that matches your existing windows down to the dimensionality of the of the sill of the of the sash. Uh, and I have to applaud your your homework on this. Wow. Uh, Really, nice work. Pretty intimidating guidelines. So. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be great to get rid of those storm windows, though, boy. That's going to change the look of that house so much. Huge, be great. Yeah. Yes. Huge. I'm excited about Ooh, seeing it. it. And it'll be so easy to open. <laughs> There's some windows I haven't opened in decades. Is there? Is there somebody like to make a motion to approve? So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Uh, all, is there any discussion beyond what we've had? All those in favor, please say aye. Okay. Aye. Opposed? You're done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good luck. Can't yeah, wait to see you. And thank you for uh, the way you handled this. Uh, a lot of homework. You did a great job. And uh, it's going to look great. We're taking care of the house. That's great. Yes. yes. You're welcome. We don't always see that. <laughs> She's a neighbor. Are you? Where? Uh, up the, out. Uh, I live in the district. Oh. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. Next item on the agenda is endorsement of open space recreation and multi use trail plan. Sir? I, I did not. Wayne is unfortunately away. He would have liked to have come to visit, but I didn't bring anything new on this item because this is basically just endorsing the idea of the things that Wayne has done. He incorporated the, the limited suggestions that the commission had into the plan, which is not written yet. That's why you're not thank you. Um, but just ideas about maintaining place names, um, yeah, interpretive signage where it makes sense to do so, like some of the cleaning the mine sites and um, Brooks Blog. I think that was really all I was talking about. It was historic related. So it's not an approval of the plan, it's just it's an endorsement. Do you need us to vote on that? Yes. Okay. Well, I would move that we support um, the forthcoming work on the open space and recreation, open space recreation multi-use trail plan that uh, Wayne presented to us at his last appearance and um, support uh, the effort going forward and look forward to updates, but you don't need to put that in. I second that. Any discussion? Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Next item on the agenda is state hospital project updates. Is there a report? Uh, do you want me to? I can sort of summarize. Yes, we had a big team <laughs> meeting out there. Was that last? That was last week, right? No, week before last. Yeah. yeah. Um, with our, our all female. <laughs> project team, which is don't quite brag, unusual. Don't brag. Well, I, I, can, I can tell you, Bill, I really, from experience, this is very unusual to have six or seven women working on this thing together. Um, and we did a lot of digging around up there, and um, I think we have a plan in place for moving ahead. So uh, on, project, on the site, on the team, is a, a preservation architect who's kind of overseeing the effort moving forward with getting the fountain back in place. Um, we have a structural engineer as well as a mechanical engineer who are going to be dealing with the underground um, building, designing some kind of a, a system that will be the fountain and then also support the fountain once it gets put back into place. Um, and then Donna, Donna Lascalia, who's um, DBW, you know, was there obviously very concerned that it be done properly so the thing doesn't leak and they have maintenance problems. Um, Sarah was there, Barbara was there, I'm, I was there. Um, does that it really made a huge progress in defining what needs to be done and what we, what we want the end result to be. Yes, and um, one thing we were able to do, which was great, was actually get to the bottom of the fountain basin. We shoveled it out, and uh, we found that there's a slurry of concrete uh, on the bottom of the basin, which is great to know. How deep down was that? Not too deep. <coughs> maybe 18 inches. 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 18, 18 inches. Yeah, yeah, not too deep. Um, so the first, um, the first step going forward is uh, a team of us are going to go down to look at the restored fountain components, which are in a warehouse in Taunton. 
and um, just to get uh, the arch the um, architect and the structural engineer in particular have to see um, if they can figure out how historically this thing was put together and supported and fed, and then um, they will do design work um, from there, and then we have to put the whole thing on to bid. So it's well, coming along, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah. yeah. I think it's good yes. for everybody to say thank you very, very much. And Barb, there, there, there was impressive. a showing of the um, A Place for Madness a film this week, oh, last yeah. week. Right, um, right. Second, Barbara, the second showing. Second yeah, showing. The film that was done by Frontline in 1994, right. which, sure. which I thought I'd seen before, but I don't I've think I did. It. It's really yeah. good. And you can see it online. Yeah. I think it's available, but it you was really wonderful. And uh, Christopher Sparks did a really good job of introducing it, mm -hmm. and then there was some good discussion afterwards. And I said, like, couple sentences about the Memorial Park project mm -hmm. and I had some brochures and some people took them so well there was interest well, well done all of well. thank you and the one thing just to note is um, in the time I've been working on this project which is over five years now or five years I guess um, that development up there has really grown and there's you know obviously more there's more to come and it, I think it's really about to happen there's a huge um, affordable housing apartment complex I guess going into the north of the fountain and then there's going to be another co-housing facility so it's really going to be a big neighborhood and uh, you know when we started it was kind of like this little park in a private place and it's not like that anymore so I think we're hoping that we can um, promote that as more of a you know city yeah a city feature for, for all to enjoy all the more benefit of a fountain yeah, yeah. Very good. so and we may be able to benefit by it's the community builders who are putting in the next mm -hmm. phase because they are required to um, provide connections to existing trails and so when they're putting in either sidewalks or roads or something we may get them to do part of the mm -hmm. walkways oh, in our park and so they're and that can count as their contribution of connecting. Right? Very good, very good. Yeah, very good. So we're sort of kills to trying to for a bigger time. You know, who could donate stuff? Start and it all. Yeah. Do another CPA grant mm -hmm. proposal, but this is once we get figures on from the, our engineering team about what they think this might cost. That's well done. Yeah. So it is. Really cool. You are to be commended. Good work. Okay. Uh, any, any further questions on that? Okay. Next item is uh, number nine preservation awards and some of the same comments uh, to the same first people uh, for uh, commendations for the excellent work done in preparation for the awards uh, ceremony uh, next uh, a week, from, a week from Wednesday. Um, so um, I assume that everyone will be there. Yeah. It's mandatory attendance. <laughs> mandatory attendance. The night. We're taking it's taking it's attendance. Yeah, um, I have to get off work. Right. Um, this is in. Uh, we're all going to fit, but we're. This is right. Sarah's email to you. I'm going to. So, the pie bar place an order for a barrage of pies. <laughs> Why don't you uh, know what you'd like? Did, did I overhear you have trouble getting in touch with Martha Clark of 15th Street? We did. Yeah, we did. Okay. And, but now I, I know where I know where they live. <laughs> they live four doors down from me, oh. and the other house is right around the corner oh, of me, which is how I, I know about the project. Yeah. It's a great. Yeah. So I think they really did well. a nice job. Barbara and I were just blown away by that property. I think it was the last one we visited. Yeah, right? it, it was, was so great. Great. <coughs> it was a very nice. Yeah. When they started that work, there was literally a giant hey, hole in the back of the house, and it was. They, took I mean, we, they let us in to look at it because we were just gawking, and we wanted to see what the fireplace looked like because we live in the neighborhood and a much older. Arts and crafts I mean, style how house. How do you get a hole in your house like that? No, it was one woman living there for decades alone, and she was not taking care of herself all that great. And so, I, I think her was that vacant like, for a while? No, she was there. She, she passed been? away in the house. Oh, wow. We see that often. Yeah. Oh. With a hole in the side. Hole in the side. Yeah. yeah. All sorts of damage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have information on so the crew the house? Did you contact? Yes. 
Okay. I have so, not so yet also yeah. more more than the right? <laughs> yeah. but I wanted to find yeah, out. Yeah, because I'm meeting with um, Central Business Architect here and Tierney was the architect for the realize that I'll chat with her about okay, she's great. the architect. Okay, great. Yeah, there's so many photos and images. Because I've got my spiel to introduce this. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, so I thought maybe you could have some other things. Oh, sure. No one's living in it. Right. Yeah, that's very good. You know, I thought, I didn't know if you'd want to wait until the next awards cycle. I've got another one if you're right. When there might not be as many awardees, or if I should pursue them. Right. I mean, right it, it could wait, so certainly, the because they are not entirely complete. I mean, they're mainly working on internal stuff, and they're doing yeah. a lot of that themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't know at this point at all? No, no, I sent a letter, and um, I and got I it took two weeks to come back to me. <laughs> yeah. so how do people feel about that? If it makes it a more manageable... I mean, I don't know if the difference between 9 and 10 is not huge. Right. So, yeah, the true. only thing I would say yeah. about it is that it's um, it's the only thing from that neighborhood, and I just we I think Barbara and I really made a concern about it. We had a lot of discussion about yeah. trying to reach yeah. out all over the city, so mm -hmm. that's why yeah. we have leads mm -hmm. and um, I, you know. I think they would really appreciate the honor. Yeah. 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 We know that we can they're get very talk. responsive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And I will. Um, and if they they gave us a tour when they were nearing completion yeah. and uh, showed off all the little things that they've done. Love. So they've obviously put yeah. them on. But that one I'd really love to be sure that we have yeah. some before pictures. Right. To yeah. really the show whole, before and after okay. to show no, what the difference is. So earlier in the process. So I don't know if anybody has pictures of that. But But they may have documented it. Well but that's and again, because I'm sure we just need to, I don't know how many people have sent you pictures, Sarah. Have, has, not everybody many. Gotten, has, anybody, has everybody gotten in touch with their people? I've gotten in touch with all my people, you know, but I've yeah. only gotten photos from one of them, and but I'll keep working on it. Yeah. Did you get my photos from the pie box? Yeah, I think I've asked them on to Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. And if anybody has anything, you can either send it to me and or Sarah. And there was, what else? Was there. They're just pictures of rhubarb and custard. Alton, <laughs> 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 yeah, right. You got pictures of the building. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 It's like the yeah. yeah. Confederate yeah. submarine Huntley. Yeah. 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 Charles Stone yeah. yeah. Barber. So the pies, though. That's what I mean. Like, I just have to get done. Silver. I'm in charge of the refreshments. Because serious about the pie bar for pies. Well. Somebody gave me a big gift certificate for a closing gift, thanking me for their house. Oh, and yeah. so, from the high bar gift certificate. Oh, okay. because so that, was the, that was the other thing I was going to see because I didn't know how many people. I'm, you know, I'm thinking that this is going to be a bigger turnout possibly than the cemetery thing. Yeah. And I was happy to, you know, to go, you know, to do that on my own. Mm -hmm. But for this, that could be a lot bigger. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if people are willing to contribute to the cost of, you know, of the refreshments. Oh, do we have any money in our budget? Yeah. Yeah. Do we have money in our budget? Yeah, we could do that. Okay. I think it would be great to um, have stuff from the Piper. I mean, I would ask the Iconica people, yeah. but they seem so overwhelmed. But I could try. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, just, I, had, I had thought I about know. that, but I just didn't know if, you know, they're going to be the awardees. Do you, do we really want to buy you know, stuff from them? Um, so we're going to buy Well, we things. have money in our budget. But someone mentioned, you know, contributions, and I said, I really didn't yeah. want to. A people who are By the way, we're just giving it as a word for the time. Right. Exactly. We will do it every year. That's that McDonald's. I gotta go. We want to make the coffee. I think we should be. Yeah. I mean, I can ask. And I think because this thing is, well, it's, you know, sort of after dinner. So maybe it really could be a dessert kind of thing. Yeah. And if we had pies. You know, maybe I don't need to bake, but we need more stuff, so I'd still be willing to bake. Maybe I could just make some, well, some I mean, cookies or something. Yeah, but I'm not used to it. I've gone down to Costco yeah, okay. and got, you know, the little rugula and, you know, some cookies. Okay, and, that's fine. Uh, I usually have fruit. Yeah, it might be nice uh, to have cheese. Yeah, you've got really good stuff for this. Okay, yeah. so you're, but, so you'll, but you should be compensated for that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Out of our room. Yeah, just save our receipts. I'll save my receipts. Yeah, yeah. Right. And we'll We're just going to get there some right now. Yes. Oh. Yes. I was going to do all I you know, kind of like fingerprints <laughs> so I wouldn't have to deal with silverware or plastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. so that's why yeah. plies are a problem. Okay, I, just, yeah. For the sake of the meeting, sorry. Time, 
please put the finger on anybody in this room yeah. to bring something if if you need us to bring something. Yeah. Yes, I'll make I'll make something. Yeah. Oh, no, and, uh, I, you know, I think yeah. that will be okay. I think that okay. Will be, I, and it's true for attention has tables and tablecloths. And oh, yeah. Yeah. Table cloths? Same table cloths, oh, but I said that we would be taking care of everything else. Okay. So um, are there any coffee? other is it does he already have a coffee? No, that's what I wasn't sure about either. That might be a nice thing. I don't have a coffee urn. So we can probably get coffees though. Like you know, they don't have Dunkin' Donuts a box of Joe. Uh, uh, Woodstar does it too. Oh, they have a what is it called? I don't know, a coffee drinker either. So coffee. nobody's there. Yeah. To carton box of Joe. To carton no, of, of coffee. It's like Woodstar a cardboard cup nice with a plastic liner in it. It's okay. Well, you put it so it's it's a pink and orange. Well, Dunkin' Donuts. Get it from Woodstar. Get it from Woodstar. Yeah. Get it from Woodstar. Get it from Woodstar. yeah. yeah. Yeah, because yeah. then they'll do a nice so job. And so that means that it yeah. has to be decaf and regular. Probably no, time of day. Yeah. Yeah. You could get a little oh, yeah. of each, you know, one, a couple of each. And then we we'll buy both, and then they'll be drinking. Well, they need water. Right. They don't have to get water. Yeah, we'll have to get cold to drink with water, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to call the media to order again. Um, <laughs> okay. And the only the only other thing I wanted to know about this is I just, these are in totally arbitrary order. On, in here right now. So, mm -hmm. how do people feel about what order they should be? I think it's easiest to proceed stronger. with the order you have. I don't know. I agree. Have we, yeah. have we then, contacted everyone except for the Marshall and Clark yeah, family? Should so. we make sure that they are able to attend before right. we yeah. finalize yeah. this? Yeah, yeah, because I, I won't. I'm just mindful of the date being very close, and I'm going to be away until yeah. just before. Well, this is like, we'll take. Right. An hour to print, really? so you know right. I could get them right. done at the last minute, and I haven't done okay. I haven't done the calligraphy yet on the certificates, which I need to do very soon, because um, David has to sign them. Yeah. Craig Barber, can we yeah. uh, make edits on this? Absolutely, yeah. That's what I want. Whether we should call it something different, like the leads to search wayfinding, maybe we should, that should be called no, that's, something that's else. That's fine. I'm talking just my thing yeah. about the the pie bar. Yeah. Our husband's not listed on here. I'm not sure he's going to be there, so well, it's not let me look in. Either it's just who owns it or who is responsible. Okay. So do you have his name now or Justin? I don't Can know you make I'll get that because right. of the date. Yeah. I think any changes need to be done probably in the next 24 hours. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or more than that, so yeah. Okay. Just Anything else that needs to be addressed in the full meeting? Okay. Then we'll move forward to CPA application updates, okay. next steps. Sure. So we that? received the hundred thousand oh. dollars for the cemetery stone preservation. How much? A hundred thousand. That's from the CPA. Yeah. Great. Excellent. Barbara did a great presentation. I completely recused. Oh, that's the CPC. Oh, that's probably. That is like, that is one of the worst graphics. Tough grilling. That. that yeah, they're very really tough. Good. I have to I'll explain to people like, yeah. take it personally. It's, it's not your project, it's not you. They do this to everybody. Yeah, but it's really, and it's, wow. you know, just now I know what you really have to think about or be prepared about and be prepared for. It, but it's really great that we got that from yeah. Martha, do you want to talk about the CPA grant? Um, so, is it okay if I talk about the preservation sure, plan? Okay. So, as you recall, there were two applications submitted to CPC uh, from this commission. Um, Sarah prepared both of them, and the one was the cemetery stones, and um, the CPC did vote to award um, uh, funding for those. The other was the uh, citywide preservation plan, and there was a lot of very good discussion about this. Barbara gave a presentation. And they asked a lot of questions. And then in the follow-up, the second meeting we had, the follow-up meeting, I gave a short presentation as well, um, just to support what Barbara had said. And they had more <laughs> questions and more discussion. These are very smart people. Um, so just, um, I'm not going to go into all of the conversation that we had, but I think uh, one of the things that they seem to be quite concerned about is that um, it wasn't clear that we, as a commission, had had a discussion about this. And we're all on the same page about why we're doing this, what direction we want to take it, um, the purpose, um, the structure of it, et cetera. And um, so Sarah and I just had a conversation about this before the meeting. And you know, one of the things is, I think that would be a good discussion for us to have regardless. But the other thing too is that this is an application that the planning office could uh, sort of handle on their own without us intimately involved. Okay, so that was that's something I think we need to decide. Um, 
there was also um, a lot of support for the idea of sort of reaching out to other members of the community, um, people who are involved in preservation or preservation-related activities to kind of get their input into the application because they did re encourage us to reapply and would like us to do that. Um, so I guess one of the things I would like to do uh, to help Sarah is to, is to uh, is to do that, to start reaching out to some of the other members of the community, such as Lorian Betty at Historic Northampton, Steve Strymer at the Rebel Center, um, et cetera. And uh, I, I think that one, I want to know if anybody would want to join me in doing that. And second of all, um, I think that we need to have uh, just a, a vote or a, an endorsement from this commission for me, to, me or us or somebody else to do it with me. Um, so that uh, it's legal. Can you give us a synopsis of what the preservation plan is presented? Do you guys want to do that? Just about what? What the preservation? What the request was for? What well, was to create a plan? It was to, it was for approximately thirty thousand dollars, I think, mm -hmm. to hire a consultant to help us to guide us in doing this plan. And um, because the last plan we did, I think the last one I found was from 1997 or something like yeah. that. Or, wow. And it, it wasn't comprehensive to begin with. Right, right, and we did contribute you know, to the sustainability plan for North, for the Northampton more recent one. But it would, I mean, that's basically what it was, to try and identify, um, you know, build on the, um, um, the, map, the four Bs. Yeah, so this be like an enhancement of that work of the form B expansion. It's more than that. Yeah, it's, it is more than that. It's yeah. identifying things, but it's also trying to create a list of priorities of what we might want to do as a committee or to um, as a community to preserve things and, and and get them on our radar. And again, and pick up a project, say like the the Bridge Street Cemetery, to actually. Um, bring forward projects based on the priorities that, that could be identified with the historic preservation plan. Now one of the ideas that was tossed around was, um, you know, just in the planning process, identifying some themes that we might want to um, pursue when it comes to preservation. So for example, let's say that um, through the process of planning we identify that um, uh, commitment to the artist community in Northampton is a really important thing. And so all resources that are, are connected to that in some way, you know, whether they be a building or a, a piece of artwork or, um, you know, maybe a place where some sort of artistic event happened, the Hestia <coughs> mural is a structure that's got a mural on the side of it. Or maybe some landscape that inspired a lot of art over the years. Mm -hmm. that's a, or a view, yep, a view, yeah, something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, when, when, so it would serve two purposes. <coughs> One would be that it would give us an idea of things that we want, measures we may want to take to preserve those things because they feed into this theme. And two, you know, when you have um, an applicant coming to us and want to tear down um, a studio, we would know that that's probably not a good thing to do because it's an important. It's been identified by the community as an important theme for preservation. So that, that's just one thing that could come out of this. Um, and uh, again, I think that the CPC was very encouraged by the concept, and they just wanted to see it more fully developed. So what I'm asking is, one, would anybody like to be involved? Two, do you feel like we want to have a larger discussion about this maybe at our next meeting? Um, three, um, would you support me and anybody else who would like to come to kind of have these larger discussions in the community? Well, I would be happy to participate having done a few of these plans before. Okay. Uh, 30 years ago, but right. still, um, uh, the basic principles are there. Identify the resources, mm -hmm. identify the means, and establish priorities. Mm -hmm. um, right. And I think that um, I have four or five or six or seven years ago, uh, we pushed for the completion of a citywide survey that would result in every building in town mm -hmm. uh, or every site in town uh, either be red, yellow, or 
green. You know, green it's historic, red it's not, yellow fits in. Right. And then to see how that maps out for potential historic districts. I don't think the completion of the form Bs that we have is comprehensive for the entire city. Right. But I think that would be one of the first steps you would need to Right, do. so getting an idea about what you have. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and well, then, what are the resources? Yes, and then also, again, you know, realizing that preservation is about more than just um, you know, preserving a, a structure. Um, it's about preserving a, a culture. Right. And the culture is defined in many ways. And what are those definitions? And once we have those established, then we have a good guideline for knowing what to protect. Well, you have to identify who the players would be. For example, historic Northampton, uh, Steve Strymer mm -hmm. and his crew, if there are other people like that, yeah. focusing on their own areas, physical areas, or areas of interest. Mm -hmm. yeah, who knows? Okay. And I think the college needs to be involved with that. Mm -hmm. uh, because not only is it an artifact in the community, right. but there are resources there. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that um, a lot of schools around the country that have architecture or preservation programs require their students to do histories of buildings, mm -hmm. National Register nominations, yeah. or whatever it would be, yes. prior to their graduation. Yeah, and I think Smith is starting to do that. I yeah. know Steve Moga, who heads up the Landscape Studies yeah. program mm -hmm. there, I've talked to him a little bit about this, right. and um, he's been working with the students on just developing mm -hmm. you know, knowledge about the mm -hmm. history of the, mm -hmm. um, the landscape in Northampton. So. I'd like for someone who's not on the CPA to make that motion um, so in second. I mean, so some. I move, second. Yeah. Any, any further discussion? I could take part, but I can't until late July because I have a conference I'm organizing that's taking all my time mm -hmm. right now. So okay. I could come on later. When's, when's your timeline for starting? Well, so December? we have to resubmit end of August? A, uh, a little after Labor Day. Okay. Even, even pre application is after Labor Day? Well, that, it's that's like too soon. Yeah, I and we already know. Yes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, I think there's a great effort. And I think reaching out to Lori and Betty and Steve or Stephanie or any other people at Ruggles who want to be involved is a great next step. But if we could figure out somebody in Leeds, um, yeah, or also the George Cook, they, they often get left out of the woman who's done the uh, wayfinding. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Who would work with a lot? Yeah. I think including them in the story would be really good. Good suggestions. I would be happy to help. I'm only mindful of a lot of other commitments right around that time. <laughs> I'm be in DC in August to the convention presenting. Okay. Well, we can get to the we can get to the yeah, right. volunteers. But right now, we wanted a motion to support this to support the the, um, the concept. There's a there's a it's been moved. It's seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Can we talk about it more at the next meeting? Yes. Yeah, I think we should. And um, uh, we have a tenant meeting set with Historic Northampton, so Bruce, I'll let you know about when that yeah, is. Good. Yeah, because I'm flexible, but in and out. And I don't think it so. yeah, needs to be one person. I mean, I think all of us could participate at yeah. one point in time. I just, I'm cognizant of the open meeting law. So that's why right. I okay. talked to Sarah about that. You know, we don't want to have, um, run into problems with that. So. Okay. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is uh, Section 106 Review Mount Tom Road Improvements. So I didn't send this because there's nothing to send, and then they gave me so much that it was too much to send. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so this is a request for, uh, I can say what it is, to uh, payment widening and resurfacing and the addition of a shared use path on a section of Route 5. Downtown Road from Atwood Drive to the bridge over the Manhattan River. Um, so the existing road is a split two lane rural minor collector road with an overall length of 4,488 feet and a width of 40 feet. The proposed project will rehabilitate the existing pavement surface, widen the road, and construct a shared use path. And then they gave me uh, probably 300 pages of project plans <laughs> that are just different color lines. And that it shows exactly that they're going to be widening the road and putting the shared use path. And so is the 106 review, they're assessing the impact on the historic stru resources yeah. there, and it, do we have any results of that at all? I mean, they're asking for our input now, but all, we have roadway plans. That's okay, so there's no report from like a consultant no. about? No. 
and they didn't need to do that? I, I don't know. I mean, it's 106 that actually... Has it gone before the cons come yet? Uh, it has not. It, it's, so this is pre-permitting stage. Okay. So it's pre... It tri they need... No, it's it's using the Highway Highway funds. So, so, they, so they probably will be, I'm assuming, assessing historic resources at some point. Usually that's required. Well, the responsibility for the historical research is with the agency. So right, yeah. exactly. I would assume they at least be doing an archaeological study. Yeah. And maybe nothing yeah. above ground. There isn't really much there. Yeah. Right. This is just repaving from, from the East Hampton line it's northward? Are they widening? So, yeah. They are widening. Yeah. So this is from uh, Atwood Drive, where the Clarion used to yeah. be, mm -hmm. to the, the bridge over the Manhattan River, so south, Jarvis mm -hmm. This is to develop more complete street build out. That road was built at the uh, the hundred year flood level. The railroad was at the five hundred year flood level. Yeah. Never floods. And there was always an effort to develop some bike lanes alongside this narrow lower road. And it was never ever permittable and this is I'm shocked. I'm shocked <laughs> that this is coming forward. Um, Years ago, the right of way just south of the bridge over the Manhattan River, the right of way of Route 5 is extra wide now. And I was told 15 years ago they would never ever allow bikes on that road to be signed. And then mysteriously things changed. And now it's a bike lane with, with protected sort of serrated edges there. And it's a uh, it would, that was shocking in itself. I never thought I'd live to see the day that Mass DOT would be coming forward. Well, it's Why part of the prep work, hard work by people well, like you. I'm telling you, it's like we see a new thing. If you were to go to sleep right now, like Rip Van Winkle, wake up in 10 years, you are not going to recognize the built environment of the roads. It's, it's changing. It's very good. I'm shocked. Yeah. In fact, I've got the governor almost committing to come to this conference here in, in July. And so this, this will be, be a big, big deal. So this would put a bike lane from where the Manhattan Trail comes down from East Hampton Center, yes. going all the way back up towards uh, Pleasant Street. It's Street. not going to be big. I can't imagine it would be more than a few feet on each side. No, but it would, it would right. put a lane all the way right. back up to North Hampton Center. Right. Good. The missing link? Yeah. I've done that once, and uh, it was frightening. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. without the lane. Yeah, I, I usually take the path all the way around, which is like a ten-mile detour, <laughs> rather than just okay. coming over. Yeah. Uh, a little here. historic narrative about the wide section of Route Five into Holyoke. There, the reason it's wide is because the trolleys used to be a double-track trolley oh. in the center that went off into oh. the Oxbow, oh. where the old dead trolley corridors identifiable there. But when the trolley went away, the automobile layout came to the center and they had giant shoulders. And now the bikes are using the giant Very good. shoulders. Very good. So. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on that? Do we need to respond to that letter? Uh, so if we, we don't have to respond. If we wanted to respond, it would be to Mass Historic to advise them of anything. Does anyone know of any um, archaeological or historically significant material? I mean, there's. I've always somewhere in East Hampton, right there, is the is the base of the the climb up to the Erie House, um, uh, and I don't know whether there were. Yeah, there's always Native American archaeology, and there's Native American yeah, potential. Especially by the river. Yeah. But um, we don't know of any uh, particular. Um, Historical structures, and it was such a flood prone area yeah. uh, to begin with that, that I don't think there's anything that's currently built that's historically significant down there. Um, okay. The next item on the agenda um, it gives me pleasure because it is to designate Community Preservation Committee representative. And um, I, there may be people clamoring for this, but frankly, I've been uh, so impressed with Martha's. Uh, contribution and, and the energy and um, insight that she's brought to her work with the CPA that if it's um, if there's no opposition I would like to have her renominated by acclamation um, and, 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 and,
Railroaded. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work that she's doing, and she has a lot of credit credit for it. Um, next item is uh, the brief update: uh, Upper Roberts Meadow Dam removal. Sure. All right, so uh, Donna Lascalia asked me just to provide a, a quick update from her. I didn't think it was necessary to come to the meeting, but if you ever want her to come back and talk to you, she's happy to do that at some point. Uh, so there are two grants involved. Um, the contract has been awarded. I went to a pre-construction meeting with my CONSCON hat on two weeks ago. So they're starting to ramp up for this. Um, the blocks that were discussed as being incorporated into other projects will be wait and see, just because they don't know how, what condition they're in or how usable they would be, but they'll keep you updated as part of that. And it should be starting next week. Uh, a couple of questions. Um, this will bring will this bring the level of the river to net to original grade so that so that if, theoretically if there is any spawning to be done it will be yes. possible yep. okay. absolutely great okay and secondly we had promised on a promise but we had indicated to the local residents that we would try to have the blocks remain in that area to for use <coughs> architectural or recreational use adjacent to this property is that going to be possible yeah it's still part of the plan but just because the dpw doesn't know what the blocks will look like or what condition they'll be in they'll have to wait and see what that looks like once they actually start coming okay out. can they be stored somehow or so i mean i yes. i, I Any, do want, I want to respect the local will, will residents be i know some of the the residents had indicated that they they personally wanted to have the blocks which isn't possible that's yeah that's not that uh, let's not do that but but <laughs> as far as uh, <laughs> So, so would I if we're just giving them out. But, then, yeah. uh, and, but and the, 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 there is a plan to incorporate the website as much as possible. <laughs> for, for those, for the, there is a precedent for this. When H.H. When Richardson's great tri uh, Trinity uh, uh, Unitarian Church was just demolished in Springfield Center, uh, opposite the library, which is now a parking lot, but it was, it was one of his early early works uh, it was it was torn down and uh, became elements of local gardens apparently uh, <laughs> it sounds like so, a fountain yeah. I know but I know that we're going to be driving one now <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it, yeah. and the great pyramids were apparently taking the face of it was taken down for construction material so it's uh, the it's, Plymouth Inn across the street from us was pieces of the statues and more decorative elements oh, are okay. infill behind the orbs on the parking lot supposedly. So the 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 and no one knows no one knows where the torso of Ozymandias is. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, enough on that. The uh, um, that's funny. Let's, let's try to keep, out of respect to the request of, of local uh, residents, let's try to keep the stones in the area. If, it's <laughs> the area. And there will, if there are a lot, DPW will retain them for other uses oh, that's okay. as they come up. And they can only use so many at that site. Mm -hmm. um, and then number 14, we're doing pretty well here actually, uh, possible future ordinance revisions. Is, are, are there anything? Is there anything specifically in mind? Because I know you can sit one to the city council on set. I had something in mind. I can't remember what it is. Okay, now. next meeting. Uh, is there any mail for review? There is not. Okay. Other business not foreseen when agenda was prepared? Oh, the only other update is that Mass Historic has declined to give the Seth Thomas Clock a historic award. Oh, that would be sad. What, what, what did they object? But we're going to give it an award, yeah, so yeah, the hell with that. Right. Yeah. <coughs> there, there wasn't a justification provided, just that they won't be doing it. Has it, it seems to be keeping proper time now. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's, it's, I, it works now. Uh, we, the Sorry, strings are all set. It, it's all, but then we had, we had a fine tuning winding process set up so that reset that back to zero so now we're learning how to wind the clock again yeah. oh. and how was the wooden bezel holding up there was a gold in that rather than a metal frame for the glass there was the the craftsman it, made a wooden i think uh, it's okay does it look okay yeah Good. i haven't heard any issues with it Good. i just wet wood weathers and, and i was just mm -hmm. when i saw that he was putting a wooden bezel on it i wanted to make sure that 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 would hold up the same way that metal one didn't 
<laughs> it's been treated significantly, so I would imagine it would be okay. Um, I have just one, one mention. Please. Oh, just um, Doug Harris, who is here uh, from the Narragansett tribe, mm -hmm. talking about um, the ceremonial mm -hmm. stone yeah. mm -hmm. um, structures, um, will be at Forbes Library on May 2nd. Oh. Um, from four to six. So that's Wednesday. That's this. Is that this one? Yeah. That's what right. time it is? Uh, four to six. Apparently. And um, I went to I went to Goshen because I couldn't make it on Wednesday. Um, and so it was that it was about two hours, and he did have slides showing, and it was really uh, very interesting because um, I had no idea what these uh, would look like and maybe they take the shape of different, you know, different forms and stuff. Mm -hmm. so if you can make it, I re recommend it. Good. Thank you. Is there any other, um, I'd be interested in any other sort of architectural historiography of these of these middens or these, these creations that these, the, 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 he was here talking about. I was fascinated mm -hmm. by the topic, but I just I wondered, uh, since it was new to me, I was wondering if there's any scholarly work that we could look to. I mean, um, I don't, you know, I don't know. The folklore you know, is important. She emphasized that it was an oral, you know, basically yeah. an oral, you know, tradition. Um, you know, so, but um, I don't know if there's keep if you keep it here to the ground on that. Yeah. Um, or how much? I'm sure there are books. There are books that have been written about Good. it. Um, other topics. Um, this we rarely have every single person for our meeting, and, and, and it's lovely to, to do it while we're while we're literally all together. We have to. I think it's good to revisit um, the uh, extraordinary uh, contribution that Bruce has given to us, and we we're saddened to have him tell us last time that he is retiring um, in 2019. February will be my 80th birthday, and I think. That's enough. It's never, enough. never enough. Or it's your, you will be the sprightliest and, 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 and youthful 80-year-old ever met. But, but um, um, people make decisions, uh, and at any rate, I bring it up simply because um, Bruce is not only a, a good colleague, whom we will miss on, on that basis alone, but he also is an AIA um, certified architect and fills a um, uh, a, 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 a position in that regard on our committee. Um, and so we will um, need to replace someone of equal qualification. And so I, I ask if you, if any of you know of anyone or encounter anyone of that uh, quality who can't take Bruce's place, certainly, but might have um, appropriate uh, 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 qualifications, um, then let's be thinking about that. And uh, so that we, this is not a sudden yeah. Uh, a sudden effort. At the last yeah, I just don't know the architectural community here other than people who have appeared before this group. Mm -hmm. So, um, fortunately, not a, not immediately around the corner, but we will. I just wanted to mention it so that we can be be uh, bearing in mind. Um, are you staying in the in Northampton? Yeah, as far as we know. Good. <laughs> Unless we wind up at Luther and he's saying. Okay. Um, is there anything else to come before us uh, at this point? We've done a remarkable job of getting it done exactly yeah. on the time. Thank you all yeah. for, Thank you for pushing us. Yeah. Yeah. Meeting is adjourned. Okay.